Hey, how's it hanging guys? It is Eric here. Today I wanted to discuss a new theory that has recently been proposed, and that is that one of the FNAF books can possibly help solve one of FNAF's oldest unsolved mysteries, and that would be the box. So, Game Theory has proposed that a certain book might hold some configuration for the FNAF 4 box. Well, at least that's what I can gather from the point they were trying to get through. Anyways, the book they're referencing is this one. I don't know what the title is. It's the one with the teaser image I'm showing on screen right now. I don't have the books, so yeah, I don't know. Anyways, this has really struck in my interest, but from my standpoint and the way I look at this box, either this book holds the identity of the Keymaster, or if there's even two Keymasters as you can theorize from there being two locks, it might tell us something of the keys and their place. And the other point is that this book might hold what is inside this box. Again, I've never read these books so I have no clue, but that is where you come in. If you have this one and have read it, is there any information of hidden keys? One or two key masters? A mysterious box? Or what may be inside? If so, please tell me below. From my knowledge, the dude in this book, Alec, was hypnotized by a short little Freddy, a two foot tall plush, which is how MatPat described it. This heads us straight into a problem because the entity in the book is a short little plush. While this teaser image is clearly not a plush. Unless it is, I have no idea, actually. So apparently, this lonely Freddy hypnotizes the guy, like in the teaser, but he swaps bodies with him. I can't embody what this lonely Freddy looks like. Is it a short little plush, or is it what we have here in the teaser image? Now, I actually tried to figure this out using measurement and math. Now, while you are listening to this, please keep note that... I am a complete idiot. When it comes to math, I have no clue what I'm doing. You can however laugh at me if I'm hilariously wrong, cause I honestly have no clue what I just did. But I'll try to explain, so you can see from my point. So like I just said, I'm an idiot. I don't know how tall 2 feet is. What I did here was converted 2 feet into centimeters. And if you convert to that, it'll come out as a little over 60 centimeters. Luckily, I have a 30 centimeter ruler handy, so I quickly recorded my process. I went to my wall, and I put my ruler against the wall. I marked with my finger where 30 centimeters is. I kept my finger there, and placed the ruler above my finger. And I finally have 60 centimeters. So what I'm trying to show here is how tall from the floor and up is 60 centimeters, aka 2 feet. Afterwards, I added height onto the bottom since on the teaser image, he's on a little show stage. I then copied this guy's pose and we actually would have met the standards of this teaser image. My height and this guy's height must be quite equal. My eye contact on the wall would have met where this guy's eye contact is on the Freddy, somewhere below Freddy's nose. So I took my results of myself recreating this teaser image in real life and the description of the Lonely Freddy by MatPat. I found out that Lonely Freddy in the books has to be what we have here on the teaser image. When I look at my results, this teaser image would mathematically match up with real life height. My still standing question is, how could this display the height of a plush toy described as short and little by MatPat? You see, it's half and half of description, of Lonely Freddy being either a literal small plush toy, or Lonely Freddy being this on the teaser image. I honestly have no clue. I did discover something using math. But the physical imaging of the story might tell otherwise. You know, I may have just done all of this, yet the book could have literally answered my question. Boy, I don't know. And nearing the end of the book, some stupid kid threw up on the plush Freddy that Alec is possessed in. Probably from pizza overdose. <laughs> and was eventually thrown away into the dumpster. In that dumpster is actually many other kids or teens possessed in many other plush Freddies. And that's kinda how the book ended from the summary I've heard. But what about the theory? What about the box? I didn't forget about that. So the interesting part is how Scott described the dumpster in the book. Here's the quote from the book. The metal and darkness that entombed them. 
Somehow, I feel like this description can match up with the FNAF 4 box, and might be somewhat of a metaphor for the FNAF 4 box. I mean, think about it. The dumpster is metal. I don't know what the box is made of. It could be metal. Darkness. There's darkness all around the box. And finally, that entombed them. See, that's the problem. We don't know what's entombed in the box. So as you can see, those three keywords from the quote have some resemblance with the box. That might be the point game theory was trying to give us. Now let's create a theory to pair with this one. Let's say maybe someone created these Lonely Freddies to specifically hypnotize people and switch their bodies with them. Could it be William Afton? He's pretty much the main guy who does this kind of dark stuff to kids, but this all depends where in time this book might take place. It'd probably have to take place sometime before Five Nights at Freddy's 3 if William Afton were to be doing this. So that's one theory, but I have another. Could Glitch Trap have possessed these Lonely Freddies to specifically hypnotize people and swap bodies? I mean, Glitch Trap is doing a very similar thing in the game series, taking over people's minds through the VR game. Maybe this is somewhat of a side business to speed up his process. If we wanted to connect this story with the FNAF 4 box, we might come to a theory where there may be dozens of little plush Freddies that are possessed by kids inside the box. But what happens with their body? If we use the glitch trap theory, he's making the lonely Freddies use the victim's body to buy the VR game, and then glitch trap will do his thing. You know, this is a pretty good theory. I wouldn't be surprised if this was true. Well, not the box, I mean, it'd be kinda hard to believe that there's little plush Freddies inside the box. I mean, come on. So yeah, that was another Five Nights at Freddy's a theory video. If you did enjoy, why not leave a like to show me that you did. So if you have any points to add on to this theory, uh, why not tell me about them down below in the comment section. And if you want to see more FNAF like Let's Plays and Top 10s and Theories, why not subscribe and you will not regret it. And if you want to be first to videos, why not study that bell down below. And uh, yeah, with all that been said, I hope to see you guys in my next video. Stay fresh.